Folks, you know and I know that we're all Batman fans here. In fact, any piece of Batman media at all at least interests me a little bit. And with highly anticipated pieces of Batman media, like the Colin Farrell-led The Penguin TV series, or the rumored and somewhat in-development Arkham series, not to mention the in-development The Batman Part 2, and of course the upcoming Batman The Brave and the Bold under James Gunn's new DCU. Whew, that is a lot of Batman, but what comes with that much Batman? A lot of Joker. <laughs> oh, how delicious it is! You can call me Joker. My father was a drinker. A truce? Bruce. Do you know how it feels to have the one, the only thing you love, ripped away from you? Now look, I know that the Joker is, of course, the most iconic villain in Batman's rogues gallery. In fact, the Joker may or may not be one of my favorite comic book villains of all time, ever. But I must admit that back in 2022, when I heard that the Joker might be making a cameo in Matt Reeves' The Batman, I don't know. I don't know how I felt. In fact, I still don't know how I feel, and that's why we're here today. See, in Matt Reeves' The Batman, the film ends with a small cameo from Barry Keoghan as none other than the Joker. It was known that Barry Keoghan had been cast in the film, however, what was unknown was the character he would be playing. A lot of us thought that it was going to be the Mad Hatter due to that one photo he posted online and tons of internet scoops claiming that they could confirm it, only to find out that he was playing somebody much more iconic. But with that iconic status comes the expectations from the audience to nail it and get it right. And I must say, while you can't really tell how his performance as the Joker would be any different from the small part in the film, there was a subsequent deleted scene from the movie that might give us some more insight into Barry Keoghan's idea of the Clown Prince of Crime. I feel like I just went like full-blown news host. I kind of nailed that take. Can we- We're definitely using We'll that. use that take, definitely. Now look, here's the thing. I love the Batman. I think Robert Pattinson did a kick-ass job. I think Matt Reeves did a kick-ass job at bringing the Caped Crusaders adventures into a dark and gritty world while also giving us something fresh and new. Okay, we got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. I'm Kier with Joe Blow Originals, and you are watching Scene Breakdown. <laughs> is The Batman, written and directed by Matt Reeves and of course starring Robert Pattinson. The movie follows the Batman, who's a couple of years into his career as a crime fighter and feeling frustrated because crime does not seem to be going down in Gotham City. He knows he needs to tweak his approach, but he's not sure how to do it until he faces his biggest adversary yet with the Riddler, played by Paul Dano. The movie also stars Jeffrey Wright, the movie also stars Andy Serkis, the movie also stars Zoe Kravitz, John Turturro, Colin Farrell. It's a pretty stacked cast, but it's who's not in the top billing of the cast that we're interested in. So we are gonna take a look at that bonus scene featuring Barry Keoghan as the Joker and hopefully determine once and for all if we think this universe is ready for the Joker already. I can tell this is going to get spicy, so let's get into the scene. I feel like you can really already get a sense for the type of Joker Matt Reeves wants. It's kind of got like that new 52 Joker kind of look. There's even a little bit of backstory that Matt Reeves has given on the character, with him having some kind of uh, congenital disease that has disfigured his face and caused him to have that smile. So very non-mysterious, I guess. It looks pretty good, you know, you can kind of see, you can kind of see it a little bit, you know, you can see where Matt Reeves is going. Now, I will say as the performance goes on, I have some opinions on the line delivery for some of this stuff, but the overall look is kind of good. It's working for me. And I also love Matt Reeves chose to shoot almost every single angle of Barry Keoghan uh, out of focus or in a reflection or obscured by something uh, just to kind of tease us as to what this character might look like. First anniversary games, paper. 
I also really, really like the kind of flirtatious dialogue in this scene. Uh, Matt Reeves really knew how to write the dialogue between these two characters. You think I could offer this stuff? Don't you? You have pictures. Now, Barry Keoghan famously, I'm going to pause it really quick, um, famously did audition to be in the Batman, but his audition tape was for the Riddler. Uh, and you can see it online. It's on there. It's basically just him walking around with like a fedora and uh, a cane and being creepy in a hallway. And uh, it's, you know, I <laughs> it worked out. Obviously, now he plays a, a arguably more iconic villain within the same universe. But I think from the audition tape, you could tell that that is not at all what Matt Reeves had in mind for his version of the Riddler. So probably for the better, you know? Got those fucked up hands. Oof. Oh, and don't worry, we're gonna talk about the laugh as soon as we hear more of it. Kind of getting a little bit of like Hannibal Lecter there. Like, oh, did you see those fingertips? Yikes. You gotta admit, the character design, it works. It does work, and all these, you know, all these shots really help sell the eeriness of the character. But this is kind of the point in the scene where I start to be a little bit more unsure about how I feel, because Barry Keoghan's line delivery, I mean, he's definitely doing a character. He doesn't sound like Barry Keoghan. He sounds like a character, but it sounds like he's still trying to figure out his Joker. It seems like he's still trying to find the pocket. You know what I mean? So meticulous. I think he's been planning this his whole life. He's kind of almost doing like it, 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 some of these lines, it almost sounds like he's doing Heath Ledger for some of these lines. You know what I mean? He's kind of, I think, still just incorporating different techniques. Some of these lines sound different from others, and I think he's just still experimenting and playing. Uh, which is ultimately probably why this scene didn't make it in the movie, and I'm glad that it's not in there. It's not necessary at all, um, while it is entertaining. But you, this is really where you start to see his performance, it's not fully cooked. You know what I mean? And that's why I wonder, are we ready for this? Or, or you know, is there maybe more stuff we can get to, more, you know, untapped potential with other villains that we can get to first, and then bring in an iconic character that's fully thought out and been fully developed by the actor playing that character. You know what I mean? I know who he is. But he is scary oh, as hell, right? Scary Barry. That's what <laughs> that's what I call him. He's a nobody. Wants to be somebody. He's even kind of doing the now, of course, he's got all that makeup and prosthetics on, and that could definitely be part of it. That's why Heath Ledger did it, but it's, it almost comes off as a little bit of an impression. You know what I mean? He feels these people have all wronged him. I do love that you can fully back. see the, the dark eyes so and the red so smile. And then when you're up close, as soon as we get these close-up shots, you kind of can't see them anymore. They disappear into the disease, into the gnarliness of it. So that's really, really good design. Why is he writing to me? Maybe he's a fan of yours? <laughs> you know, he actually... You know who this version of the Joker is to me? I gotta pause it again. For my comic book readers out there, if you've read it, let me know down in the comments. And tell me if Barry Keoghan's Joker reminds you of the Joker from Serious House on Serious Earth. That is very much the vibe. I get from the look of the character, uh, but as well from the kind of, you know, flirty, yet very threatening and eerie dialogue. It actually makes me kind of like it more. I don't know. Let's keep it going. But something is different this time. This is very upsetting to you. Now, the thing that I also really love about this is... Matt Reeves knows how to bring the Joker in front of Batman and have them create something magical for the audience, you know? The whole thing is this scene exists so that the Joker can deconstruct Batman and can kind of flip the coin and show him a little bit about himself and challenge him, you know? But this scene really just exists to show off how good the Joker is at kind of deconstructing and almost diagnosing the Batman, you know? Let's get back to him. Why? 
You are so much more fun. I'm not here to talk about me. What are you here to talk about? I think Robert Pattinson's Batman costume, by the way, is probably my favorite on-screen Batman costume. I know a lot of people love the uh, Snyderverse kind of Dark Knight Returns cloth Batman suit, but this one for me, whew, so good. That cowl is so good. Masked Avengers. So he's even more righteous. These shots are good. The patchy look of his hair is pretty gnarly. I like the color of green, you know? You'd think that that's not that important, but it is. Okay, okay. I tell you what I really think. I love the way that they do this. The teaser with the eyes and then the mouth. Separate, you don't see them together. You're not sure he's wrong, huh? You think they deserve it, huh? Man, that is kind of a lot. So let's talk first off about the laugh, because the laugh is, believe it or not, a very important piece of the character. I mean, he's known for laughing. It's not the best laugh I've ever heard. I think that that award would certainly have to go to Mark Hamill, but it is good. It's really hard to get like a, like a belly aching, authentic laugh, unless you're actually laughing. So it's decent, I'll take it. I think the line delivery, while the dialogue was of course incredible, I think that there was, I think that there was a little bit something missing. Like I said, it still felt, felt a little bit experimental to me. And I don't know if you guys feel that way, but of course I wanna hear all of your thoughts on this down below. But what I wanna know ultimately is, are we ready for this? Because we're getting a lot of Joker stuff. I mean, for better or worse, there's a lot of it coming. And I don't wanna claim Joker fatigue because if it's good, I'll always take it. But I just wonder, is there better opportunities, more unexplored stuff that we can do before we jump back in to the Joker thing. And then follow that up by letting me know when it's time for more Joker. Are we stoked on Barry Keoghan? I think he can do it. I just think we're gonna need to see him adapt a little bit more before stepping back into that. And I also would love it if he's dapperly dressed because if he's got that fucked up gnarly face and hair, how cool would it be to contrast that against like a purple pinstripe tuxedo? Anyway guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below and also let me know what you wanna see from Barry Keoghan's Joker when we inevitably see more of him. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, but of course let me know what other iconic movie scenes you would love to see me break down here on the channel. Thanks everybody, take care, Bye bye